Simon Constantine used to be one of the key players at Lush Cosmetics. He is now struck out on his own. And is still attempting to change the world one fragrance at a time by making cosmetics and perfumes that put the money back direct into the people that need it most. An idealistic scent in fractious times. Oh, okay. oh, hello there, Simon. So what, the first thing I want to talk about is the decision to start a new line of perfume and the backgrounds behind it. Well, I've started uh, a new fragrance company called And Fragrance. Um, I've been working on it for about nine months, but um, something that's been brewing for quite a lot longer than that, really. Um, and, yeah, basically the, the idea, the concept behind And is to really take some hero ingredients that come from ecosystems that are really beneficial in terms of the communities that kind of harvest from them. So we've launched with a, a fragrance called Bean, um, and that that uses Tonka that comes from the Amazon. But, but this actually launched as a fundraiser. Um, we didn't initially think we would do that, but um, it, the beans of the Tonka tree are collected by the Kayapo, who are Amazonian indigenous group. Um, and there are other groups as well that collect Tonka, but we've um, focused on them at the moment. Um, because we've only just started and we've been raising funds because indigenous groups in the Amazon in particular are susceptible to COVID-19. And so, um, yeah, that's been the kind of the force behind why we've, we've launched at the moment. So what, so what was more important, the situation the tribes found them in or the actual, um, uh, the actual Tonka itself making a perfume or is it just the two combining? It's, it's a mixture of both, to be honest. I think that's why I've picked the materials that I have, is that if you can get it right, um, you know, they, you can have a really great quality product that people want to buy with great quality material that is uh, helping in either maintaining an ecosystem or the re restoration or regeneration of it. And you can help um, or support communities around that as well. But there's another important part, I think, in my mind anyway, is that um, land under indigenous ownership is, uh, it sequesters more carbon, it harbors more biodiversity, and in general is a healthier ecosystem. And so at this point in time, it seems relevant to actually stop and listen and understand how human beings are doing that when not many other human being kind of groups are doing that. So, so when, when they received the money, um, did you have stipulations of how it should be spent? I mean, is, is there like a, a background to that? Uh, for this, basically, I, I've been, the, the ingredients themselves are the kind of the beginning of the relationship. So there's a simple trade between the ingredients once you've you know, discussed that. Um, because of the nuance of something like this, and because we've only just got going, we've had plenty of open conversations about how do you benefit share um, you know, the perfume industry uh, is a profitable industry, and yet I don't see them doing very much around sustainability and regeneration. Um, you know, there are people doing that, but not enough. And so I've had patients with the groups that we've been working with. Um, they get over the site of the marketing materials, and um, we kind of work on, on a sort of more of a partnership basis. I think for this fundraiser, it was focused on the needs that were generated from the Kayapo, and, and we're going to distribute those via the Rowney Institute. So Chief Rowney um, is chief of the, of the Kayapo, and he there's an institute set up. Um, I've, I was lucky enough to meet him and gift him the very first bottle of bean a few months ago, um, and then they will distribute that how they see fit. And I don't at the moment I don't see the need for us to have any oversight on that because I, I trust that they know the needs greater than I do. So it's, it's, it's as simple as just putting money into their economy, the local economy. Yeah. I think that there's, I, I think currently, um, you know, we start with the, if you start with the ingredient, that's, that's the core part of it. And I think that that's a really nice tangible connection between all of us, customer, me as a perfumer, um, and as community groups in different various ways of connecting us actually quite tangibly through a product. 
Um, and especially, you know, with, say, lockdowns are easing and all that, but, you know, it's with the coronavirus and, and kind of it's hard to connect to people. And so this is quite a nice way of, of doing that and a physical kind of tangible connection. But that is really only the beginning. And because we're, we're just starting, we can't make any more promises than that. And the conversations that we've had are, as we progress, um, that there will be opportunities to partner on a deeper and deeper level. Um, and so the intention by launching on a fundraiser was to say, look, we're here. And the statement of that is that there's an intention for us to be um, in solidarity with these communities and, and trying to work on solutions to situations together um, in a more equitable way. How that will evolve depends. I mean, the reason I'm being a little vague around it is depends on the success of what I've created in terms of a perfume and what we've created in terms of a brand. Um, and as that becomes successful, which I hope it will be, then there'll be more and more opportunities for us to deepen the, the partnerships. And I think that that's a comfortable, the conversations I had, say, in with the First Nations community that we're, we're sourcing from um, was exactly that, was to take it one step at a time because quite often people have turned up, promised a lot, and disappeared without delivering any of it. And I'd rather be in the in the, the opposite of that, which is uh, under-promise and over-deliver the benefits. And um, and so I think, yeah, the heart's in the right place and we'll keep working towards a, a positive uh, business model. So what do the, the tribes do you tonka for normally? I mean, do they, do they make their own sense with it or do they use it for different things? Is it a food? Or is it well, like one of those amazing plants you could do about 100 different things with it? Yeah, I think uh, depending. So with Tonka, I know that that's been used um, in food all over the all over the world, actually. But um, weirdly, in America, it's kind of frowned upon, and I don't think I think there's regulations on using it in food in America. But whereas in France, it's used as a, a you know as a kind of vanilla replacement in patisserie, um, and kind of really it's a really rich uh, flavor in itself. So, um, yeah, so I think that there's multiple uses for it. Actually, um, I think in, in America, one of the issues is that there's a, it's called Kumaru in, um, in Brazil, and you can derive Kumarin from it, which is then derived into warfarin. So there is also, you know, obviously quite, um, uh, there's good solid evidence around that becoming a, a viable kind of heart medication and things like that. So, yeah, I think they're very, it's a very, uh, uh, efficacious i don't know it's a very yeah, effective I like that word. <laughs> yeah i just i i've done these before i realize i've watched stuff back where i just made the word up there but yeah it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's a very effective can be used for remedies i'd love to know more one of the things i normally would love to go out and visit um and to see where where a material is coming from and unfortunately at the moment it's just not possible and it's not appropriate and it's quite nice actually for me to be grounded and to actually have to to do it myself from here, so um, yeah. But it would be lovely to understand more from the communities how they use how they use Tonka and and what they how they interact with it. So, so when you start to build a new fragrance and say you, you need a vanilla type base for it, you sort of research the most beneficial type of vanilla to a community somewhere to build the base on. Yeah, so one of the actually one of the fragrances we'll be releasing a bit later later on is is using a Madagascan vanilla, um, and if you take something like like vanilla, it's an interesting crop to look at because, in actual fact, although it's uh, endemic to the sort of um, central Central America, it's obviously been spread all over the world since then and, and grown uh, a lot. But I quite like vanilla. One, I love you know it's a, it's a really lovely. Um, fragrance once you extract it and if you get really good quality beans it's a lovely fragrance to be able to use um but also it is a vine that requires other trees to climb up so it, it naturally lends itself to uh, you know if you're dealing in the tropics it lends itself to something that would grow better in a mixed system and when i say that i'm thinking rather than have a monoculture or something rather than have an industrial agriculture really this lends itself to small holding farmers who have got a small patch of vanilla underneath shady trees and so you end up with something that's a little bit more biodiverse and if you do it right you can do other things as well so 
the Madagascar and vanilla will come from um, from farms that are supporting biodiversity projects and agroforestry systems. So uh, you know, a nicer way of growing things. So is it? So now that you don't work with Lush anymore, is it? Is it make it easier to do these projects? I mean, I imagine you had quite a free hand at Lush. I mean, what is, is there a difference to the way you operate now that you're more independent? Yeah, in terms of Lush, I mean, I've still got a working, you know, working relationship and a family connection and friends. And so in terms of leaving or not leaving, I'm not being, um, you know, I'm not employed by Lush currently, um, but I have bought the ingredients, some of these ingredients via Lush. Um, and so Tonka is the same Tonka that Lush will be using in their, in their fragrances that I help formulate or, and, and others. Um, and this is more aimed at being symbiotic with Lush in terms of looking at the fragrance industry solely, not the cosmetic sector, not the natural handmade cosmetic part of things, but just taking that fragrance piece and kind of sharpening the tool, if you like, to a point of saying, okay, fragrance industry, what are you doing? So, um, you know, obviously I, I, I was at Lush for 18 years. Um, you know, I, I talk to people all the time. So I'm more really focused on how to leverage a collaboration and to, to get some change going on, really. Um, yeah. So, so the way you would operate now, um, potentially what you're doing with the new company, are there differences between that and what, what Lush is? I mean, obviously, it's a smaller company because it just started. But yeah, there's the biggest difference, is it? Yeah, the biggest difference is it's in my shed at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> like Lush was at so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in a way, it's quite a nice reminder because I remember when I was a, I was a kid, you know, my mum was making soap in the shed and inventing bath bombs and, and things like that. So it's been quite fun in lockdown for me to be inventing perfumes and the kids are, are kind of going, oh, what's that, Dad, and smelling it and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they've been helping label and, you know, a few other little things, but I won't tell people that because it's obviously uh, child child labor. <laughs> but they've, um, yeah, so that side of things has been lovely. It's been a bit of a family affair, really. Um, I think that obviously there's the the scale. And in actual fact, it's quite intriguing that some of these ingredients Lush don't use because they probably would be a bit too big right now to to make it work. They might, the demands may be a little too um, rapid for some of the groups to to take up, and so actually, I've, I've some of these ingredients are, are ones that I've I've seen a couple of years ago, not been able to use because the price and the the way it all fit together just didn't fit. Whereas with a a, a fine fragrance brand, the the pricing structure is different, and I can I can kind of nurture that within a very small space, and um, and hopefully grow that into a, you know for the future. I mean, how do you see uh, a future, a post-virus future? Do you think it's going to change the way people do business? Do you think there'll be more businesses like yours and, and your families and, and, you know, the lush businesses? Or do you think we're just going to go back into sort of accelerated helter-skelter into, like, Trump world? I, fear. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was, during lockdown, I was particular. I actually felt relatively optimistic, aside from the sort of the trauma of, of what especially frontline staff were, were dealing with. Um, you kind of think, actually, this this may have been the break we needed. Um, you know, if you think that carbon emissions were drop, dropped by 25%, um, you know, a, a whole series of things, you know, the homeless were, were sheltered adequately, the, you know, a whole series of beneficial things that you thought, well, that's quite interesting. Everyone's, everyone getting a universal basic income for a period of time. All of these quite incredible things um, movements that you probably wouldn't they were fantasy just a few months before all of a sudden were reality and we were in the middle of it um it's a real shame when you look at say black lives matter matters at the moment and kind of you think some of those things just haven't been resolved you know like it's it it looks like business as usual all of a sudden doesn't it and you think oh no i really that i'm finding quite kind of dispiriting actually because i think that we've been provided this incredible opportunity and um you know aside from some of the you know the real um tragedy of it there is this break in things where we can start to uh, and this is part of the the thinking behind and is how do we weave something back together that is a little bit more appropriate um we've gotten out of order you know we, we aren't within the order of the natural world anymore um you know our demands on the natural world are, are completely 
beyond it and then it can't sustain us so that it, to me is the sort of primary concern um within society you know there it, it's gotten to that sort of fractured state where something has to happen to heal that doesn't it you know and maybe that's what you know maybe that's what is happening at the moment in america and and in in protests and and so you, d- you just don't know do you so i can't judge it but i do think i feel very much like a, who is it you said it was actually my wife's auntie who said oh you're captain of your own canoe now uh once i left lash and i do feel like i'm kind of in this tiny little sailboat bouncing around in the waves and just hoping for the best and um yeah i think you know we're we're all it's an online uh, business at the moment so i think that that's a positive uh, you know i'm not reliant on a retail structure or anything like that so from a business model i, I feel okay but yeah it's it's going to be interesting i mean I, I mean it's a lot of pressure but when you watch the news and it's like the deluge of all the world's problems does your mind sort of go mm, is there any way i could actually do something here to help in is it just like incredible amount of stress in it well, yeah, it's difficult to, like you say, I, I like to be able to, and, I, and more and more, actually, I think I like to be able to jump to a solution um, where I can see it. And so for me, you know, like this is based around a solution. So it's identifying an issue, whatever it might be. So, I, you know, I've been particularly interested in indigenous rights and and um, and kind of, yeah, gone on a whole journey with that. And so for me, this is my response to that and this is a potential solution you know if if you buy these products they support this and um we can work together on on a better world and i think that some of the some of the issues are just very complex and finding those solutions is probably um is going to take some time but i think that would be my preference i think that activism is incredibly um necessary at this point in time to highlight what the problems are and then there's an accompanying piece that has to be, and this is what the solution is. And I think that then we'll become, you know, quite coherent. So, yeah. I mean, it's, um, and I think that's quite important, like companies, like what Lush were doing, maybe like Eco Trust and Delve and Stick. And what you probably will eventually do is providing the answers to people like Greta Thunberg and her generation's questions, isn't it? Do you see that as a role yeah. that, that you pretend, potentially play? Yeah, I, I'm quite excited actually about that edge between the problem and the, the solution in terms of business. You know, so we get you, the the narrative normally is the business is driving the issue, driving the problem. It will be a, a company or consumption that will be driving deforestation, all this sort of stuff. And I think that um, it's right to highlight that. And then I think businesses need to be either current businesses or new businesses need to be answering those questions and so that's what i've you know endeavored to do with and um that's what i believe that lush has the capabilities of doing as well and i think there are other companies out there who are really starting to to get it and catch up um and then you just have to be careful navigate the minefield of greenwashing and and kind of um trickery that goes on but i think there are genuine attempts to solve the problem yeah i think greenwashing as long as somebody's actually doing something and not pretending it's probably better yeah. than cooking, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's it. You've got, to make, you've got to make a start. And I, I, this is just even within myself, you know, nothing's perfect. Nothing's going to be 100%. And in actual fact, I think that um, I like having an open conversation with customers, with people, with, you know, around the fact that this is the starting point. It is trying to make a leap forward, but it's not perfect. These products that I've created, there'll be issues that people have got in terms of, um, you know, maybe they don't like the, the company structure right now in terms of how you benefit um, communities, but we can work on that. And that's definitely something that I, I want to focus on, really. Do you think, uh, like Dale Vince, do you see business as a tool for change, a positive tool for change? I think it would be, although people, you know, it, normally it's kind of oh business and you roll your eyes and stuff like that it, business hasn't gone away do you know what i mean people still wake up and they think oh i do need to buy some stuff whether it's toilet roll or perfume do you know what i mean and and how that's produced who shares in the benefit of that and um and kind of what it's driving in terms of a link to ecosystems and communities and all of that sort of stuff is is vital so i i can't imagine a world without some form of business and trade in it in which case you should probably just get on and, and work out how to make it work, you know? Mm. And finally, what, so the future of the company, you talk about doing a range using plants from Madagascar. 
is that the only other project or do you have a you know, is, is actually a project you're about to tackle and one do you think you'd like to do you know is it is it a master plan or is it just project by project uh, at the moment i've got five ingredients that each one of those is kind of uh, i'm championing because they are from these areas um and they either communicate either they connect with communities and indigenous groups or they support ecosystems or preferably they're doing both to really make the most impact. So Madagascan vanilla will probably be the last one we release. Um, there's frankincense from Somaliland, uh, again, working on how to preserve and, and restore frankincense, uh, you know, in, in the horn of Africa, frankincense become um, almost over, over traded and it's a way of how we're going to restore that it's been you know there's a lot of over harvesting and of trees which means that they die and it's kind of a spiraling thing so very complex again very complex to navigate that but um that'll be called frank uh there'll be oils coming from the great bear rainforest great bear rainforest in canada um and that's really exciting as well because um that is a great example of um community action first nations coming together to protect their uh their kind of estate if you like their lands um they classed it as the great bear rainforest as a registered trademark so it's an amazing piece of work that actually acknowledges the great bear rainforest as a as its own entity and um yeah, so that will be a really exciting um, fragrance to to work on. And the uh, what's that? Frank Bear, and then we've got sandalwood from Aboriginal communities in Western Australia. So I've got kind of five laid out already, and then it would be lovely to do more. But I, I need to wait until I've got every, all my ducks in a row before I can do anything else. Brilliant. Well, thanks for that, Simon. 